Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, welcome, Mr. Secretary. Um, of course, you know what my question is going to be. How soon are we going to see the Northern Border Report as mandated by federal law? I'll get back to you today. I don't, uh, don't know, but let me take it, all seriousness, let me take it for the record, I'm sorry. Okay, um, uh, it, it's, it's uh, obviously, we, we had hoped we would see it in June. I think we have some reason to believe it's going to be delayed, but it makes my broader point, which is, um, you know, we need a strategic plan in terms of border security. And one thing that we hear about is fencing, and I, I've spent a lot of time on the southern border. I believe that barriers can be enormously effective as they, as they have been in the San Diego area. But again, we know that most drugs, at least the previous administration would tell us that most of the drugs that we're talking about are coming through the points of entry and not walking across the border in remote locations. Um, what additional strategies do you have to do additional screenings? Where's the investment in, in um, more personnel, more screenings, more technology at the points of entry? I'm sorry. In a sense, that's part of the border strategy. There's, there's, uh, there's no doubt, uh, and I'm a, I know a lot about this from my last job in particular, but there's no doubt that uh, heroin, methamphetamine, and cocaine primarily come through the border uh, in vehicles, primarily. Uh, marijuana is, in yeah. some cases, humped around um, you know, through the, through the uh, desert. But for the most part, the three big killers in the United States come in uh, and what I've, uh, if we, if, if Kev, Kevin McElhinney and, and uh, just a tremendous uh, professional and dedicated, uh, my hopes is that the, uh, the that the Senate uh, uh, confirms him, uh, and uh, but he's uh, already in a in a role that makes him very very valuable. I've asked him to look at the technology after next, uh, in terms of looking into um, looking into vehicles, uh, tractor trailers, things like that. Uh, to, to look at the voids, as they're called, mm -hmm. so we can decide which vehicles get, get searched, broken down, and to increase the number of vehicles. The, the other way to do that, we already do it in Canada, we're doing it in Mexico, and that is to work across the border where, uh, with the Mexicans or the Canadians uh, in terms of uh, facilitating movement of uh, transportation, you know, lo uh, looking at vehicles before they're locked and sealed on the way north. So there's, it's a multifaceted approach, but if I could, and I'll, and I'll just end with, but if we're trying to do this on our border, uh, we've kind of already lost. The place to take the tonnages out are uh, working with the Mexicans, which we are, to help them locate uh, the heroin, the poppy fields, which they can destroy, working with the Mexicans uh, to identify, and we are, and yeah. they are destroying the methamphetamine and, and, labs. And just to raise a concern there, um, we obviously have in the past had pretty good relationships with the country of Mexico. We saw in a, in a regional election uh, the ruling party coming very close, in fact, not getting a majority. Um, the last thing we need is to um, not have strong and great relations with the country of Mexico. And so I just ask you and urge you, given your experience in the region, to um, encourage this administration to look at the entire relationship, whether it's a trade relationship, whether it's a border security relationship, or whether it's just um, respectful talk. Um, that, that does us no good. I want to just I work cover it every couple, day. I want to cover a couple quick points. Um, I have beekeepers who can't get, I don't know what happened there. I didn't do it, though, no, you didn't. Secretary. <laughs> I didn't hurt your shoulder. Um, I have beekeepers who can't get seasonal workers in, and it just seems like the delays are getting longer and longer for the H-2B visas and the H-2A visas, um, and seasonal workers can't wait. How long do you think is a proper time frame to get an answer on whether we can get workers in the country, and what are you doing to, in, right. to um, you know, meet the requirements of the law, but to expedite, especially for seasonal um, ag workers? We're, we're, uh, the A workers, um, you know, I know we already have large numbers that come in and have been coming in over the years. Um, but uh, looking at on the on the B side, H two B, working with labor, you know, this is all about in the current administration. This is all about American jobs versus yeah. people that come in and do Except the work. Except I have doctors who can't get in. Right. I mean, you know, if 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 the administration wants to send me beekeepers 
and doctors and a whole list of Americans who want those jobs will be glad to do that in my state. But we've got to recognize that in the meantime, especially as it relates to physicians, it's extraordinarily difficult to recruit physicians to, to my state. And we have seasonal workers who we can't, I mean, obviously would love to hire locally, but that is becoming increasingly uh, impossible. And so I'll probably submit a question for the record. Um, finally, because I'm running out of time and I want to get an, enough of this in, um, if, you, if you look at uh, local border enforcement, um, the, the critical component in states like ours is not just technology, as Senator Hoven talked about, but it's having a strategy and a plan. And that strategy and plan has to involve local law enforcement. You have Border Patrol in North Dakota that when they are patrolling the border, they aren't radi in radio contact with, with uh, your people back in your points of entry, back where, where um, Border Patrol would muster and, and uh, deploy. So, so we know that we have to have that backup. Um, one thing that concerns me, and it goes to the FEMA grants, it goes to, to, goes to this idea that we can cut grant programs and still provide those services. Stone Garden's been an enormously successful program really concerned about reductions in the commitments to local law enforcement, not just for border security, but for safety of the personnel who are on the border. So I would ask you to play, please pay close attention to this budget as it relates to working with local law enforcement, local um, first responders. Um, they are force multipliers. And without those resources, they're going to have to cut back on resources, and that reduces our readiness. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Okay. I will. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.